Hi, I'm Mark Bunker, and as you may know, I'm running for Clearwater City Council. Just a few nights ago, we had our first and last televised debate, so folks throughout the city of Clearwater could see what we had to say on various topics. This forum uh, was split into two halves because there's two seats that are open for the council. Seat two, which is the one that I'm running for, and then seat three, which is being defended by incumbent Dr. Bob Cundiff, kind of a friend of Scientology, at least he's not willing to take them on. Um, seat two is wide open and we've got five candidates going for that seat. Now, you may know me from my longtime uh, work as an advocate for those people who have been abused or defrauded by Scientology. And I've been standing up and speaking out against Scientology's abuses now for more than 20 years. And I moved here to Clearwater because I wanted to make a difference on that issue and so many more. I cared about Clearwater long before I moved here. So, um, I, I want to show you a little bit of video. This is going to be from those folks running for seat three. Because this is going to show you basically how candidates normally deal with this. Uh, so those of us who are on stage, the five of us who are competing for seat two, because I was up there answering questions in a kind of hard-hitting way, uh, saying how I'd go up against Scientology. The other candidates had to react to Scientology questions. And uh, one candidate, Mike Menino, was very strong. But I, I want to point out, and this is no slam on Mike because he's a good guy and I like him. Um, but if I weren't up there, would he have taken them on the way he did? And I say this because all of the candidates would appear at various uh, forums throughout the city. And one time we were all at um, an HOA and I showed up a little late. So I didn't go on till last. So Mike Menino and all the others had got up to give their pitch. Uh, and I was the only one that mentioned Scientology at all. I know that because people came up to me afterwards, multiple people said, thank God you're here because we kept waiting for somebody to bring up the elephant in the room. No one said a word about Scientology. And that's usually the case. Politicians think it's the kiss of death to go up against them. Me being in the race has forced them to at least address this issue as a serious issue. It's not the biggest problem in Clearwater, but it's the biggest problem that no one is willing to talk about or do anything about. And so I'm not gonna show you our comments on seat two, uh, because I'll put a link in here. You can watch the entire forum um, and see what we all had to say on all the topics. Uh, including affordable housing and environment and, and, and other issues of importance, traffic congestion, uh, making sure that all of our neighborhoods are heard. And that's something that really bothers me because I'll go to the city council meetings and developers, they can get anything they want like that, it seems. But when the people come up to speak, eh, they're pretty much ignored. So I want to put a stop to that and make sure that we're paying attention to what the people of Clearwater need. But uh, back to Scientology for a moment. I'm going to show you the answers that the candidates for seat three gave on Scientology when I wasn't there on the panel. And this is normally what you see. Now, Kathleen Beckman, who is a good woman and uh, deserves a spot on, on the council that's going to be up to the voters to, to decide. I'm not going to say anything bad about Kathleen. But she, um, she had to kind of mention it. And the other three candidates completely ignored the Scientology aspect of the question. 
that's normally what happens in all of these races. We have to have somebody on the council who understands Scientology and is not afraid to take them on. So let's take a listen to the status quo with these answers from the C3 candidates. We are not here tonight to argue for or against the Church of Scientology. I am talking about policy issues. If the city is going to grow, a study commissioned by this, the city says that you need people living downtown year-round, not just seasonal. Given people's fear of the presence of Scientology and also steep rental and purchase prices, is that even possible? And we'll start out with Ms. Beckman. Is that even possible to get people to come downtown? Yes, w with housing prices being high and the fear of Scientology. Well, I understand that there's a, a lot of um, occupancy in the apartment buildings that are already downtown. When I talk to people about revitalizing downtown, um, I suggest that if you want it to be revitalized, you need to get down there and visit the merchants and the restaurants that are downtown. Um, I. I don't think we need to be intimidated or bullied by any one entity that we think is down there doing something um, that makes us uncomfortable. Um, it's our down. It's it's our city. Uh, we need to go down there and enjoy it, and and really reward those merchants who have put their neck on the line and are operating businesses and support them. Um, how else are we going to make it attractive for future entrepreneurs and businesses to come down there? Mm -hmm. Mr. Cundiff. During the last four years, we have been moving toward more affordable housing, uh, either in or near downtown. Uh, within uh, a couple of blocks uh, um, north on uh, Garden Street is an 84-unit uh, affordable housing uh, apartment building. Uh, just south of that, closer to the city, uh, we built an entire 12 or 13-unit uh, neighborhood with Habitat for Humanity homes. All of those built with sweat labor by working working people. Uh, Apex 1100, uh, one, Apex 1100, I think it is, uh, op has opened up. It's not it's luxury apartments, but it's hundreds of apartments uh, that are are cheaper than the condos because they are rentals. Uh, across across the street, uh, also apartments have opened up in Nolan, also not cheap, but downtown. We just uh, voted a couple of weeks ago for an, uh, a plus 80 plus uh, unit of affordable housing. Okay, Mr. Elias. When I go to Dunedin, and when people from Clearwater go to Dunedin, we see people everywhere, on the streets, on the sidewalks, weekends, and I think, why can't we have that kind of activity in downtown Clearwater? One of the issues, I think, is the fact that we have so many people who are working on the beach and working in downtown. They live in Pasco County. They live in Hillsborough County. They have to travel all of that time to come down here where there are no living accommodations. So I think the issue of affordable housing is significant, and we need to be able to say, let's bring people downtown. We have, we have the luxury apartments. We have the, the high-end living accommodations, let's begin to take care of those people who serve us every single day and, and bring them downtown so that we have a thriving downtown like the other communities that surround us. Right. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Professionally, I work as a senior human resources director for a long-term care facility. So I see every day, I give people jobs, that's what I do for a living. Um, so I see people where the people come from. And like many others said, uh, many of them come from outside of the area, Pasco County, Hillsboro even, because they can't afford to live in Clearwater. It's important that we do something about affordable housing um, in our downtown and throughout the city itself. We need to make sure that um, we are giving incentives for developers that want to build um, complexes that would um, portionize some of the, some of the uh, units to affordable housing. I think that's key to the success of bringing people downtown because they all can't afford a luxury apartment. 